Happy Friday. Friday again. As you can see, I'm taking a little break from Santa today to work on my counted canvas piece. So I'm just gonna start off my little length of thread. Oh. I have a funny feeling we might be hearing a fair number of sirens during my video today, only because the weather has just, the weather has just started. It started pelleting some snow pellets about an hour ago. And generally, as people get used to their winter driving again, uh, things can get a little messy outside. So this is from Nancy's Needle. It is a counted canvas work piece called Starry Skies. And there are a few different things about canvas work that are exactly the same as my cross stitching and a little bit different. As you can see, the stitches are different. We use something called a slanted Jobelin stitch. Now I'm gonna show you the page of instructions here that comes with all of Nancy's patterns. I don't think I'm showing anything here that I shouldn't show because it's, uh, it's not the pattern, it's simply uh, general instructions on how to complete the stitch. So this, as you can see right here, is what the slanted Jobelin stitch looks like. And the way that you do it is you come up, I'm gonna unthread my needle so I can use it as a pointer. You come up in one hole and down in the next hole where it tells you to on the pattern. But then you come back to the bottom and you go back up to the top. Come up at the bottom, down at the top up at the bottom, down at the top. Now, it's not always going to be exactly the same depending on the orientation of your stitching and where you're headed, but generally that's the way. So that you'll notice on the back of your piece, the back is equally as covered with those long lengths of stitches. And that's the correct way to do it. You carry your thread across the back towards the next stitch. So that's the slanted Jobelin stitch. This piece, this particular piece, that's the only stitch that's in it. There are no other specialty canvas stitches. The only other thing that's in here the, is the way that I stop and start my thread, which is the exact same thing that I, the, the same way that I use to stop and start my thread on regular stitching pieces. It's called the Bargello tuck. Now because I'm right-handed, my Bargello tuck looks like this. So you're going to carry your thread at the back of your project underneath three or four threads. You bring your needle out and then you're going to re-tuck your needle around the last two or three lengths. Uh, little, you, you take a little nip of thread again and you just anchor your thread one more time. So if you've heard me talk about the Bargello tuck, that's exactly what it is. It's a, just a neat way neat and tidy way to anchor your floss at the back. With canvas work, it's especially important that you do that because of the fact that distances can be great at the back of your fabric and sometimes it's not a very secure place to start your thread if you don't do it. All right, so I'm gonna jump around here because I've got a little bit of floss left. Actually, I'm going to anchor that. You can see how this is where I've come up with my thread, but I'm headed over here. So even though there's lots of length in the back of other threads, because I'm carrying this one purposefully to start a new motif, I always feel better just anchoring it in the back there. 
All right, now to make sure I count this correctly. So we count holes. I count holes in canvas work. I don't count threads. So I follow my pattern and I'm going to count four holes. One, two, three, four. Oh, the children are now out for recess. So we have got snow beating against the window, sirens in the background, and now the children are out at recess. So this is not going to be a very quiet video today, I don't think, but that's okay. I think I'm going in the right direction here. I just have to double check. Yes. Okay. I'm just filling in these little parts of the stars for my starry sky. And this one just has a few stitches and it's done. And that's it. That's all it took and it's completed. I think there's another one close by. So I'm going to anchor my thread in the back you certainly do not have to do this. I think I'm a little bit fussy about this because I like things to be secure and neat and tidy. So when I can anchor it, I will. And then I'm going to be coming up at the bottom here. Counting one, two, three, four holes for this particular location and then one, two, three, and four. So as you can see, the coverage is very very fast and looks quite beautiful it's very satisfying canvas work I had a lady on the Facebook group who quite liked the look of this project I, sh I showed it on Monday's floss tube episode so now when I'm anchoring my thread I'm going to do another Bargello tuck at the back in order to make sure that it is securely anchored and not going to come out. There we go. Clip my thread. That one's done. Uh, she was wondering, she lives in the UK and she was wondering where she could purchase this pattern and kit and supplies for all of, to, to, to do this project. And I didn't know the answer so I stayed a little bit quiet and I knew someone would eventually answer and sure enough I believe it was Nancy uh, not I don't believe the woman who helped I, I'm I oh, I apologize I cannot remember her name but a very helpful lady piped in who is also from the UK and said that she had purchased hers directly from Nancy's needle online uh, Nancy's Needle has a website. You can find it. I believe it's just www.fromnancysneedle.com and she offers her patterns and designs as kits so you can purchase the pattern and everything needed to go with it. And I believe that this lady also mentioned that her shipping was quite reasonable. When I purchased my canvas work pieces, it was all from my local needle workshop when Thread and I was still uh, in business so I still have this is one of a few that I still have to finish so I'm not looking I'm not in the market to buy any new canvas work for the foreseeable future so the next thing that I'm gonna add in I'm gonna complete my empty spots here and here and I'm going to fill this in with some treasure braid so this is, I believe this is different than the one that's called for in the pattern, if I'm not mistaken. And again, I'm going to show you the, I'm going to show you the uh, supplies list here. Again, I don't think this is a secret. So I'm stitching this on 18 count Zweigart mono canvas. And 
the Rainbow Gallery Cresta Doro. So that is what is called for, and I am using Rainbow Gallery Treasure Braid. And at the time, it was Kathy at Thread and I who helped me sub this out for what, what it was called for. The number on the one I'm using is 23689. So it is a rayon metallicized polyester blend. 10 yards or 9.1 meters. 9.1 meters metric system. All right, this is, it's a little easier to work with than Krynik. Not that I, you know, I just had this conversation this morning with, with Ginger Gerald about Krynik versus Petite Treasure Braid. And we were discussing, I'm, I'm trying to kit up the, the Glendon Place design called Catherine, which is one of the Baroque uh, flowers. If you're not familiar with those patterns, oh, they are, gorgeous but anyways I'm I'm kit I'm in the process of kitting it up and it requires beads and crinic and all kinds of wonderful wonderful things and Gerald said you know usually I, I really don't like crinic I try to sub out petite treasure treasure braid when I can and so it was just it was it was nice to have a discussion with someone who who understands <laughs> Who just understands, you know, the why would we be having a problem with Krynik? It's kind of one of those obscure conversations that if I tried to talk to my husband about Krynik versus Petite Treasure Braid, he would look at me like I had three heads. But it's nice to know that you are there listening to me and you know the difference between Krynik and Petite Treasure Braid. And so that's why we do these videos so that we can have a chat and feel like there are other people out there who get it. Now, here I go. I'm gonna fill in this little area and watch how fast it goes. Watch how fast and how pretty. I have a feeling my camera is gonna be a bit shaky today because I am at the kitchen table and the leaf that the camera is on I'm leaning against it with my elbow while I stitch. And so I think it's going to be jiggling the camera just slightly. So I apologize in advance if the video quality is a little bit uh, wobbly. So here we go, coming down to the bottom. So as you can see, you always retake the stitch back in the same the same row of stitches. Just fill it in. It's like coloring a picture, which is pretty much what all stitching is, isn't it? Filling in a picture. There we go, last little stitch there. And that little segment is done. Look at how easy that was. Finished. Now I know for a fact that there is a little bit more of this uh, Rainbow Gallery. I think I called this Krynik. It's not Krynik, it's Rainbow Gallery. There's a little bit of a fill-in right here, so I can just go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop leaning against the table because I have a feeling this is really jiggling the camera quite badly. Let me know. Let me know. Sometimes I forget that you can't just talk back to me right now, even though you probably are talking back to me. You still can't answer my question immediately. So hopefully, if I take my arm off the table as I stitch, that should improve the jiggling. Okay. So now I'm gonna come in. I know that uh, I'm looking at my pattern here. The next fill-in is right here and I'm right there. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill that in. There. 
neat and tidy. Done. Where am I going now? There is a whole box of these stitches right beside the blue, so I'm going to now come down here and let me just double check my pattern because it's right over the fold of the pattern. Let me make sure that I'm right. Oh, it goes down, it goes down a long way. So what I'm about to start is the match of this line here and now I'm going to be doing it here. So I better just count and make sure. I think I'm going all the way. It matches to this line that's in the middle here. So this, this is the fun part where you don't have to count or even look too closely at it. You can just zip along. So I told you last week or the week before about my neighbor's cat, Sasha, who has taken a shine to my family and my house. Maybe it's more that I've taken a shine to her. And as I speak, Sasha, the kitty cat, is asleep. Actually, she just, you know what? She heard her name. She just heard her name. She jumped off the chair where she was having a nap and now she's come to visit me. So let's see if I can get her to meow in a minute. We'll see. Oh, now she's on the table. She's actually on the table and <laughs> she heard her name and she came to say hello, which is hilarious. So there she is up close and personal. <laughs> She's decided to lay right on my stitching. So I'm sorry, honey bun, you're gonna have to move. As you can see, we're all a little bit, oh, now she's digging her head into the water dish. Hang on a second here. Go on, nobody invited you to come up on the table. <laughs> Go on. That was quite funny. Anyway, we are not, I am not feeding her, I promise. Oh, now the dog's jealous, so the dog's gonna come over and investigate. I promise that I'm not feeding her. I promise that I'm not giving her any treats because I know that she needs to go home to her own family at night, but her children go to school during the day and her owner goes to work outside of the home and he puts her outside and it is cold out there so you know she comes and knocks on the door and she asks to come in she has a little nap and then she goes back home i think that's perfectly reasonable anyways it's meant that i have a little cat to cuddle which has been a pretty nice gift I don't have to pay our vet bills, <laughs> which my husband likes even better. All right, here we go. Now we're just going to zoom down the row. And as you can see, at least I think you can see here, there are three rows of this rainbow gallery and I'm just starting on the first row here. Sounds like the teacher on guard is blowing her whistle over there. Where I sit in my kitchen, we have a window seat that we use as seating for our dining room table. And it's a bay window. And there are cushions on this 
window seat and the cat has decided that one of these cushions is a very comfortable place to have a little snooze and so that's where she settled herself now. She's all curled up on the pillow and then she gives me the side eye every once in a while probably because I'm talking to you. go now I have to get right down to match the middle of this row here so I have to make sure I don't go too far Is that, that's the last one right there and then we fill in the corner one to, she's making a move to come back. Oh, there we go. She's back on the floor now. Three. There's that side. Now, um, this side of it, three, four, let's see. Okay. I'm going to start my way back up but I'm not sure how far this length of thread will get, but that's okay. There we go. Maybe I can do two more stitches. What I like about the Rainbow Gallery is that it does not tend to fray. So you can really work it right to the end of the length of the thread and it doesn't fray at all, which, you know, for a, it's not an inexpensive product. It's nice that you can, you know, use it up to the very end. I think I can even sneak one more stitch. Look at that. Not too shabby. There. Okay. So flip it over, sew in my end, and I do want to make sure you, I do a Bargello tuck here because these threads are quite loose. So I do the Bargello tuck, but then I again put it under lots of stitches so that it's tacked down as best I can. Okay, so I think what I'll do now, I think I'm gonna do this blue pearl cotton fill in because that is just, that's going to be easy peasy and be very satisfying. So this is blue uh, pearl cotton. This is number five, DMC number five, pearl cotton. And pearl is spelled, you wouldn't think it was spelled, it was spelled this way, but it's P-E-R-L-E. -E. That's how you spell pearl for this particular type of cotton. This is number 799, which matches, of course, DMC regular old 799 blue that we are familiar with for the regular cotton for stitching, six strand floss. And the way that I handle this pearl cotton is I snip the skein in the middle of the loop. I snip it in the middle of the loop and I keep the knot tying the ends together and then I can simply take a length. There's a very loud bang outside. I think I better put you on hold and oh it was a car accident. 
it was a car accident that just happened. Oh dear. I'm going to pause you for a minute. I, I better go see what's going on. Well, I can't see anything too close by. It's obviously happened on, we live, we back onto a main road in the city of London. It's a very busy road. And of course, right now at the moment, it is snowing very, very heavily. It's whiteout conditions on the, uh, on the road so I'm not I'm not surprised but uh, I, I hope everybody's okay but it's a it's a very busy road so I'm sure that there are lots of people there to help this has been an exciting episode today we've had cats jumping up and making star appearances car accidents whiteout conditions outside it's been uh, it's been quite a show so let me get back to my pearl cotton here. This is again, $7.99 pearl cotton. I cut the loop in half so that the lengths are the length, the length that I like to stitch with. I keep the knot in the middle and then I can just pull out one length of thread for what I want to do. And then the rest of it, I keep in floss away bags got all of my threads are separated out into their own individual floss away bags and then I keep those floss away bags in my project bag so that everything stays together where it's supposed to be okay now you see that's isn't that funny when you do something out of your normal routine I couldn't find my needle and it's because I would put it on the other side of the needle magnet and I never do that I always have it on this side this is why I like to put this side of the magnet here because it's stronger than the, the face of the magnet that has the little button part on it the cute part I like to use the ugly part All right, so we are threaded and ready. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be filling in this pearl cotton here that's gonna come all the way down to the middle section there. Just fill that in. And as you'll see, just like with this rainbow gallery section, it is so simple and satisfying because it's so quick. So the where I'm gonna anchor it, this stuff here is quite loose and um, you know, I'll probably, it would probably just slip right out again if I tried to do a Bargello tuck right here. I could do it if I had to, but I don't really have to because I have lots of other uh, thread backing on the back of my project that surrounds it that would, that's a lot easier. So I'm going to choose to come in over here where, actually I'm not. I'm going to come over here only because this is where I'm going to be bringing up my thread and I'm going to be coming down into the, the blue there. So I'm going to choose a spot here in the rainbow gallery there. The lengths of pearl cotton you can keep nice and long. The lengths of the Karen watercolors, so that is the slightly more, uh, these are, it is cotton. I'll show you a close up of this. So this is the Karen watercolors. And as you can see, it's a, it is a cotton. It's a three ply Pima cotton and it's hand painted. I mean, it's beautiful stuff, but it can be if you try to use lengths that are too long, it really shows the wear on the on the floss because you're pulling it through this this sturdy canvas. It really pulls on those fibers. So in order for your thread to look its best, you want to use lengths that probably aren't any longer than about 18 inches. So for people who like to use really 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 long pieces of thread when they stitch you're going to want to maybe not do that for this type of work only because you can tell the thread will get fuzzy 
it will it will start to get fuzzy and it will lose its shine after a while and so part of your stitching won't look as nice as it could so okay so I think I've come in once I need to anchor this with my extra little tuck there and now we're good to go secure all right here we go coming in at the top down at the bottom the reason I like to when I can go into the hole that is shared with the Karen watercolors is because it, it like I said it shows where right so I want to pull those fibers down towards the back as much as I can instead of working them and bringing them forward it's it's just a just a choice but looking ahead to make sure the project looks its best that it possibly can I don't hear any sirens out there yet so I'm hopeful that that crash that I heard was just a big fender bender and everybody's okay Oops, yeah, I missed a hole. Do you see that? Can you see that I missed one? So I'm not going to bother taking it out, or am I? Actually, do I have to? Hang on, I've got to look at this closely. Yeah, I have to take it out. Bummer. But what I can do, instead of taking this one out, I'll just come down one hole here like that and then I'll come back and I'll fill in the one that I missed like that there done now did I double that up I don't think so oops it's not nearly as steady as working on my floor frame for you is it I hope that I hope you can see it okay and I hope you've enjoyed watching me do something a little bit different. I thought maybe you might want a little bit of a break from Santa. So I did finish Santa's face. I talked about it on Monday that I was uh, determined on Monday night to not go to bed until I had completely stitched Santa's face and I did it. He has a face. He has cheeks, he has eyebrows, he has a beard, he has, he even has a hat. It is done. So I am really working towards a finish on that project. If only I could, you know, manufacture some more time, I could do all the things that I want to do. So as you can see, that long length of pearl cotton gets eaten up pretty fast when you have to do these really long stitches. But look at how beautiful that is. I am recording this on Thursday afternoon and I'm going to have this video uploaded and ready to go to go live at 6 p.m. on Friday so that it's up for our weekly Friday off the grid. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a Facebook group called Friday off the grid and we, the, the premise behind the group is that worldwide we grab our stitching and we have you know something yummy to drink like a coffee or hot chocolate or a glass of wine and we park ourselves and have a little party of one 
and work on your current whip or whips for six hours. So from 6 p.m. until midnight or as much of that time as you can fit in. Just time to take for yourself and put some major put a major dent in the progress of your of your whip. So I am recording this on Thursday because tomorrow, so by the time this this is live, we will have already done this. So I'm okay telling you what we're doing. We are going to the University of Toronto tomorrow for my daughter to do her very first university tour, which is pretty exciting. Now, we're not sure that she's going to be going to the University of Toronto. Uh, she's not sure she's going to be going to the University of Toronto, but we're all pretty excited that we're at this stage and that, you know, she's, she's getting ready to make that big step. Now, I still have some floss left, so I'm going to carry on a little further down my path here, but I'm well aware that the direction of these stitches change at that middle line there. So you can see my the stitches are slanted this way for the blue and then this way down here as I cross that middle line. So I know that my 799 has to start slanting the other way right now as well. So these next few stitches, I'm just going to get that established and then I can end my thread back over in the blue watercolors. I think I can do one more. red chicken with pearl cotton. Not for the faint of heart because you have to do an awfully long stitch. And I think that's it. I don't think I better press my luck for another one. All right, let's anchor that thread over here. Now that feels pretty loose actually. That does not feel secure at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to retake it and bring it over here. And now it feels a bit better. It's certainly there's enough length there in that end that I'm not concerned it's going to be coming out. And that's it. So that's what we're going to be doing during the day tomorrow is uh, touring the University of Toronto campus and so I knew that I wouldn't have time to record a video tomorrow. I should say, actually I'm not touring the campus. My husband John is going to be with Sarah and they have a few appointments with a few friends of ours in various fields uh, who are out in the workforce in the areas of interest that Sarah has and so they have appointments in the afternoon to meet with these people and I am actually spending the day with Nicholas with my son and we are going to be going to the aquarium in Toronto so it's it's kind of a big deal because I can't remember the last time I had the whole day to spend just with my son and John gets to spend the whole day with Sarah doing something a bit special too and then we're all going to meet up the end of the day when we're done. So by the time we're sitting down for Friday off the grid, we'll be back together as a family and can spend the evening together. And you know for a fact that I'm going to have my stitching in hand. So I think I have to leave it there. I think I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to get back to my sewing. But this was, this was really just so much fun. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for uh, your patience with the various interruptions that we had today. I'm looking out my window and the snow is, oh, it's floating down. It's magical out there. It's just beautiful. 
I am sorry for the person who had a fender bender outside, but I'm inside snug and warm and watching the snowfall outside and it's beautiful. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope if you do have snow that you love it and if you do have snow and you are not a fan of snow that at least you can tolerate it and look forward to warmer times ahead. Dream about a sunny vacation. I don't know. I like snow so oh and there goes the snow plow. I can hear it. <laughs> It's the start of a long winter season, I think. This is early. This is very early this year for us to be getting this much snow. It's quite early. But I'm not complaining. Not even a little bit. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I will see you on Monday for Monday Floss Tube. And I will see you on the Facebook group Friday Off The Grid all weekend long. And I hope you enjoy. Take care.